Yes, uh, good morning everyone. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I'm going to show uh, a brief presentation about our work. Should you, go, should you want to go into details, of course, the, there is some more information in, in our paper. Well, last year we did present here an idea uh, about um, real-time communications and direct-to-floor. We, we, we did see last year that if we combine them, we can improve traditional energy consumption. So this year, we want to, to focus in, in this point. Uh, we, 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 we have identified energy behaviors in each different stage of the journey, taking into account these four variables. This was the starting point. And then we, we want to propose energy saving improvements and later on generate a database with this information and develop a software that can achieve an intelligent leaf control. In order to do what? We would like to choose the best energy saving profile for each journey. Here we have the different stage, the different energetic behaviors studied. Um, all of them have been uh, studied uh, in more than 500 tests <coughs> carried out in our test tower. We've got today installed a lift of 13 people, capacity 1 meter per second, gearless 2 to 1 roping, 50% balance with a compensation chain. Well, this is the first phase of the journey, the zero hertz phase, motor startup and brake release. We've got here a, a real graph of our test tower. On purple, we can see the speed profile of the journey. On vertical, we have power, horizontal time. So in blue, we can see the power, the frequency inverter and the motor were demanding from the grid. We can see area number one. There is an, an energetic demand. Well, basically the frequency inverter is trying to magnetize the rotor. But of course in synchronous motors today, uh, the inverters don't need to do this operation. It's not necessary, so we suggest to eliminate it. If we have a look now to area number two, this is an area that is after the brake release command is given. So of course, the area we got below the blue line is the energy, okay? So <coughs> that energy, area number two, in all of the cases generates energy demand in the lift. So what we suggest here is to adjust it dynamically. How? We would like to calculate the release time and we, would we will try to reduce this phase time as much as possible. The brake release time uh, is an important factor firstly because we can reduce losses, energy losses, but of course because it helps to improve the comfort of the journey. We can avoid rollback effects and bumpy starts. This time is not constant, it's dynamic. And traditionally, we can use the brake switches to control this time. But unless they are inductive, inductive sensors, they tend to malfunction. So what we suggest here is to understand, to interpret electric variables coming from the frequency inverter, uh, coming from the control panel, and calculate this value in real time. If we talk about rollback effect, we know that we need to obtain the torque value in order to avoid this effect. Traditionally, we can of course use weighing devices and with some software, we can know the torque demand before releasing the brakes. But depending on mechanical designs, sometimes we can find some malfunctions. So we, we suggest here to use the electric variables instead of the weighing device to calculate this, this value. Well, let's have a look to 
next phase of the journey, which is the smooth startup. We are now in area number three. If we have a look to the purple line, we can see that the leaf is already in, in motion. Uh, the leaf is working on very low frequencies because very probably we can find mechanical frictions, so we need to minimize uh, these effects in comfort, so we need to move very smoothly the car during uh, a period of time. So always we, we are going to find energy consumption. It doesn't matter if the motor will work as generator or will work as a motor. Always we are going to have energy consumption, so we suggest to adjust properly this time. Let's have a look to the acceleration profile. Firstly, we would like to show the generation mode journeys. This is a real graph of the test tower, power versus time. So the area below the lines is the energy the lift is demanding from the grid. This is, uh, this is a graph with different loads between zero up to 450 kg and with the exact acceleration curve. And what we find here is we can see this horizontal line, which is, this means that the lift has achieved the generation capability. It's not demanding energy. The motor is not demanding energy. The thing is, in order to achieve this capability, we have different delays, okay? There are different times to get this capability. So if the load in the car is into this interval, what we suggest is to reduce this time in order to achieve as, 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 uh, as quick as possible the generation capability. Well, if we increase a little bit more the load in the car, we are still in generation mode. Here we, do, we suggest to do the opposite thing. We suggest to smooth the acceleration profile. And we can see how generation is anticipated. Journey time is slightly longer, about, about half a second, uh, and we find energy savings. If we continue, uh, if we add more load in the car, we smooth the acceleration curve once again, and here the generation is not anticipated. The generation is delayed. However, it's interesting to get energy savings. And of course, if we continue smoothing too much the acceleration profile, we will find a point where energy losses uh, uh, appear, are found. Talking about acceleration curve motor mode journeys, we have identified settings where we can optimize journey times, keeping the right comfort quality, and they, of course, depend on load conditions and the speed to be achieved during the journey. Depending on the load conditions in the, in, in the car, we can overspeed the nominal speed of the motor. This is an interesting point, but as a first, as a first point, uh, we will need to add kinetic energy to the system, so we are going to increase the energetic demand. Okay? What happens is, as because we are traveling faster, shorter time traveling, and we've got a shorter time wasting energy and losses. So a good idea, I think, could be that the smart control, depending on the load in the car and the distance of the journey, could find uh, the proper speed point to be applied for uh, the journey and to get energy savings. Well, next phase of the journey, approach to floor phase, we know that direct to floor solutions uh, get faster journey times. We know that approach speed uh, generates always electricity demand, so direct to floor solutions eliminate the approach speed, so they uh, help to achieve energy savings. This is the last part of the journey, the last stage of the journey, low frequencies. This is just when we, we have been traveling, you can see an horizontal uh, degeneration mode, okay, we are generating energy, but as in the moment when we reach speeds close to zero hertz, what happens is the leaf starts to consume energy. And it happens always, it doesn't matter the load in the car. So what 
we suggest here is to know the proper breaks in gauge time and to demagnetize as quickly as we can the motor without producing noise and we think we can get energy savings. Well, so we have identified some speed cool profiles, electrical adjustments, we could generate a database and a smart control. How does it work? The smart control before starting the journey already knows the direction and the distance of the journey. Once the brakes release, we can calculate the car load in the car, the car load in the lift, and we can choose the speed point for the journey. So then we go to the database, the system, the smart control goes to the database and chooses the speed curve profiles and the electric adjustments of the variables. Well, here we have what we have found. These are real results in our test tower. Because time reasons, uh, I will explain this briefly. On vertical, we have different loads from car empty to full load. And on orange, in orange, we can see the savings of a journey of a six floors distance, which is 15 meters more or less distance. And the, the, the savings identified are going from 3% up to 41%, depending on the, the load conditions. Well, Another thing we, 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 we made, uh, we have developed a software that allows to simulate uh, energy savings to be achieved in the, in, in the lift using our, the, the database that we have found. Okay? So we have three examples. A metro station uh, where we've got a lift of two stops, 2,000 journeys every day. Here we, 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 we can see the load conditions uh, for the journeys. So for example, 28% of the journeys are supposed to be done with 450 kg in the car. Well, what we find is the savings are about 8.8% using the dynamic control. This is another idea, a residential building where we've got random traffic, six stops. Um, we, we, we have been thinking about this sequence, okay? What you can see the, the lift goes from ground to fifth, fifth to second, second to ground, etc. And on the right, we can see uh, the load, the number of people in the car during all the, all the journeys, okay? And we can see the savings with direct to floor solution and the savings up to 15% with the dynamic control. Last example. It's a hospital, hospital with a medium traffic lift, uh, 5,000 journeys, sorry, uh, a lift with uh, <laughs> 1,000 journeys uh, every day. And here we apply uh, a radian uh, system as well, okay? These are the car load conditions going up and down, the floors. And we have found here that a dynamic control can achieve more or less 15% of savings, and region control can achieve 30% of savings. But we didn't take into account the idle and standby periods. In this moment, we would like to pose uh, one idea. The dynamic control is here. We, we have been thinking about dynamic control in order to reduce energy consumption. Another idea already well known in the leaf industry is to use region, region solutions, but to, we have to take into account a uh, couple of things. Idle and standby modes imply more energy consumption in a region solution. And of course we have to add a higher cost because we have to add hardware in the control panel. I would like to pose one question here, where exactly that energy that we did uh, generate, where exactly that energy go? We can assume that uh, some of it can be used by the car lights, brakes, control system circuits. Also some of it is injected into the building's grid and can be used, consumed either within the building or outside. What happens is sometimes 
depending on the impedance of the electric net in the building, depending on the, on the type of meter and on the uh, architecture design of the net. Sometimes the energy company could be charging us for an energy that was produced by us, by our lift. Okay. So here is the idea. Is it an option to use dynamic control instead of producing amount, some small amount of energy without assuring who and how, uh, who will use the, the energy and how it is used? Well, let's go backwards to, to the dynamic control. Uh, uh, let's speak, uh, let's discuss about the ISO. Um, the, the, the ISO um, sets that all the tests must be done with car empty. So because of that, we cannot apply all the savings identified in our paper, because in our paper, we have identified energy savings for um, different, uh, different loads in the car, and also we can overspeed the motor. So we didn't overspeed the motor here, and we, didn't uh, we, di uh, we only did test uh, the car empty. Okay. So just an example, uh, a building with category use four, uh, we could achieve traditional and DTF uh, class C as an energy class, and with dynamic, we could achieve B class. Example B, uh, a lift uh, installed in a category used to building could achieve class A instead of class B with the dynamic control. As conclusions, the starting point, it was the DTF and the real-time communications combining, combining them. We have uh, been studying the behavior, energetic behavior, uh, during all the journey, taking into account these four variables, speed, direction, number of passengers, and distance. A smart control that uses a database uh, with all the profiles. It has energy decision-making capability, and it can use uh, the journeys, uh, sorry, the curve profiles and the control variables. <coughs> we think this could be an efficient energy solution because we have found some uh, improvements. It doesn't require any hardware. We have seen several cases, traffic cases, and maybe it could be a more competitive and an alternative solution to regime systems. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>